So my name is Alec. Um, I lead marketing here at NFT.com. Um, I wear a lot of different hats as we're a startup. So I've done everything from building the Genesis keys to helping to conceptualize a lot of the design of what NFT.com is. Um, my background is uh, as an artist, actually, as a musician. But um, I worked on the Hedera Hashgraph project as a founding team member there. And uh, now I'm working on NFT.com. Brilliant. So we know that you're a builder. We know that you're a connector. We know that you're a communicator. And we know that what you're working on clearly captured enough of your attention and your interest that you were willing to forego other opportunities coming from Hedera Hashgraph to work on this. That that, yeah. that helps my audience into it quite a bit. Um, maybe we can unpack a little bit of that. But uh, before we do that, yeah. can I ask um, if you could maybe, if there was something that, that kind of stood out to you when you were first looking at moving to the NFT.com team, what was it that really attracted you? Uh, being that you're somebody that already has experience, exposure, uh, you know, uh, a connection graph in, in the blockchain space for yourself, I mean, you had other options. So what what really attracted you? Uh, what was the, the most magnetic thing for talent in your mind to move over to NFT.com and uh, and yeah, what did that look like for you making that transition? Yeah. You know, it's it's actually kind of funny. Um, after Hedera, I had kind of swore off crypto for a little while. Um, I it was a, Hedera was an amazing project to be a part of, but um, it, it was it was pretty intense uh, back. You know, we we launched almost into kind of a bear market there, and um, after that, uh, it, it was a very kind of corporate enterprise grade project. And my thing is, I really like building communities. After Hedera, I actually worked um, in a bit of e commerce for a while, building communities, and uh, I was like, man, this feels much more like kind of true to my soul. Uh, you know, being able to like speak to people on a one to one kind of level and uh when uh our, our co-founder jordan freed uh let me know that they bought nft.com and was like hey you should come work for me you should, we, you, we should go we should build this thing this is going to be fun um i kind of told him i was like you know the only way i'm working in this again is if we get to build something with the community i want to be like on the ground level with the people who make web3 interesting i see what's going on with nfts and as an artist like this is the chance to fix a really broken industry of like um you know I come from music, but I know graphic designers have had experienced the first big wave of like an artistic renaissance and anything I could do to kind of embellish that and add value just uh, sits right with me. Awesome. The the communities within uh, Web3, like, I mean, like you just said, they are very sensitive to what is grassroots and what is attempting to to feign being grassroots. So yeah. like, uh, that's awesome that that was a condition to, to bring you back into this project. Tell me a little bit about like getting onboarded and helping to develop this platform. What were things that you saw as opportunities, as you said, to add value to the NFT ecosystem and right some wrongs? And what were the challenges that you saw initially that you were like, like, hmm, we got to fix that if we're going to make this work. Mm. You know, it, it's an interesting one. Um, so initially, you know, with with having the domain, I'm, I'm not going to lie, the 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 chicken or the egg kind of came before the chicken here a little bit. Um, uh, and uh, we we had NFT.com, which was purchased in 2021, uh, January of 2021 by our co-founder. And um, it, there was a bit of a process of kind of ideation of like, OK, what are we really going to do with this? Like, how do we make something special? Like there's a bunch of other, you know, NFT marketplaces out there that exist. Um, how do we make something unique here? And uh, the thing that I kind of came down to was I, I found it really frustrating because I like minted a ton of like random like more loot things and stuff. And there was never like a good way to like display what I had and kind of showcase the things that I need in the way that I want, um, like all my digital goods and items. Um, so that was kind of the first thing we really drilled into. We were like, how do we create kind of a customizable gallery experience where you can showcase the things that, that you have and, and you know, showcase your Web3 personality and and uh, home in a unique and custom way. Um, when I look to the kind of future of like, you know, our digital future of like what what the world's going to be, you know, in the long term, um, I see a lot of little tiny ecosystems and in industries uh, sprouting up. You know, you've got people who like are metaverse real estate salespeople, which is like so cool because I remember the days of like Second Life where I was hearing about people buying digital land and I was like, oh, that's dumb. There's 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 people who are, um, you know, creating um, like clothing for avatars and people like making avatars for metaverse stuff. Um, there's people who are building collections. And, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of different opportunities to provide people a, you know, a unique kind of, uh, you know, storefront or, um, you know, a gallery or, um, you know, like kind of home of sorts for your digital goods. And that's kind of what we're setting out to do right now. We kind of have a little internal slogan, a, a digital home for your digital goods, which uh, we've, we've been playing with. So okay. that's the big awesome. one. 
Awesome, awesome. Okay, and it sounds like yeah. also with your background, you, you, when you were looking at this at this new digital home for digital goods, um, you you had to have been cognizant of the fact that we're we're currently in a multi chain world, and that that's going to be mm-hmm. one of those speed bumps. Talk to me a little bit about how you approached that when you came onto the team, and what the NFT.com uh, leadership's response was to that. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a brilliant question. It's something we get a lot. Um, so we're all a, a bunch of us actually are ex Hedera. Um, so we have a bunch of, a bunch of people who follow us. Are we're like you know we're, we're launching on Ethereum, and you know why aren't you launching on Hedera? And uh, what what it came down to is right now the. The biggest chunk of that market and and where the majority of adoption in nfts is and the least friction is in the is in the uh the ethereum ecosystem so although we're starting there our true goal is to be completely chain agnostic and really kind of become uh, a hub for wherever nfts and web3 digital items exist um and and that also kind of goes to you know how you build something with community versus above community um you need really really good feedback loops you need people who are in discord like every single person person on our team is in our discord listening to what's being discussed we have community feedback channels when we discuss these things weekly on calls and um and and that's kind of the the goal here we're i don't know i i I guess the way I see it is like, if you're building a project in Web3 right now, you kind of need to be a bit of like a servant to the community and to your community and to what they need and what they want. And uh, it, it, I, so I'm like, I'm, I'm a big gamer. And uh, a, a lot of times um, in, in gaming, in the gaming space, people are like, uh, you know, if if all companies really have to do is kind of listen to the community and so many don't. Um, and I feel like if we do that, we'll we'll get the rest right. Sure. No, that, that's awesome. Uh, you know, I'm reminded of a, Old, old business book, right? Um, uh, how to how to win friends and influence people, right? Dale Carnegie mm-hmm. had it right. I, I think I think uh, to, the way you just said it, it's it's what's old is new again, right? Like listen to people, help them feel valued. Uh, I love what you said about working with the community as a, as opposed to working from above the community and just handing yeah. something down from an ivory tower. That's <laughs> awesome. I think that <laughs> yeah bodes really really well, right, for the future of the project. To know that that's kind of your take on it, that you're you're like you're you're in the thick of it, you're elbow to elbow with anybody who really wants to build with you. That's great. Um, yeah. As far as uh, so, sounds like uh, if there is kind of multi multi chain plans, it has to be maybe phase two, phase three, somewhere down the line. As soon as there's a little bit more gravity and traction uh, on this this first version of NFT.com, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And ultimately, you know, we we don't want to be the people who just decide de facto, like, okay, we're, you know, we're going to integrate Solana next, or we're going to integrate Te- Tezos or Hedera or whatever it is. Um, we we kind of want to put this to a vote of sorts. And, um, you know, how we do that is something that, that we're going to define pretty soon. Um, but, you know, we... We, we have the resources and some amazing development talent to kind of take this in any direction. Um, and, you know, we're as much as we like to kind of forecast where we're going, we're also trying to stay very agile and um, and be able to kind of pivot in the needs of what's happening. This, you know, the space moves fast. Oh, oh so. yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. On that note, um, the interview time moves fast as well. And I, I don't want to get yeah. too mired in asking like semi-technical Sorry. questions because we could talk about like DAO structures and potential models that you guys are evaluating. But it sounds like a lot of this is going to be up to the community. And, and at, apropos of what you said before, uh, it, it sounds like if people want to have a vote in that right now or have a voice in that right now, that Discord is a way to get that real-time feedback from you and others on the team and, and kind of shape the future of how that how that plays out um, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. So, um, so we're – go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to ask a no, question, but uh, yeah, but uh, you wanted to offer more on that. I'd, I'd no, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to drill into that a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, uh, it, Discord is definitely the place to do it. Um, but but how we're kind of rolling out this this platform, um, you'll see in a lot of uh, our, our points on Twitter and things where we're saying nft.com forward slash you. Um, when when I talk about you know this gallery experience, it's uh, it's more than just a profile. It's an NFT that you actually own and can trade and can build on and do whatever you want with. And so you can go out there and and uh, mint nft.com forward slash mind your biz or forward slash alec and you know build build value into this own it um customize it how you need and this is your kind of this is your web3 home base <clears throat> your nft storefront of sorts um or whatever you really want it to be um and and that is kind of the the key piece that's 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 giving you a voice in in where things go right we're inviting people to um uh, you know own a place in web3 and utilize that to to help shape the future 
Awesome. Okay, so let's uh, uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, let's let's move beyond what the potential future could be because, like you said, it's blockchain. So this time, six yeah. months from now, it could that could look like anything, right? Um, mm-hmm. Or a year from now, goodness knows. That's a, that's an eternity in blockchain. Uh, right now, though, as far as getting these, uh, like I think most people call these like uh, value-added pages or subdomains, not not technically subdomains, but but an ENS name, uh, and then also a minting key. Is that the correct terminology? Help my yeah. audience understand exactly what that looks like when you go to nft.com slash you um, and how that mm-hmm. looks in terms of the minting process and the ownership model in the simplest terms if you can yeah so at launch um on april 26th at 7 p.m um a blind auction opens for the first 3,000 genesis keys um these are these are fully artistic uh mix of like hybrid and, and art keys that that provide access early access to nft.com and enable you to mint uh two nft.com profiles of your choice to own to do whatever you'd like with um <clears throat> these uh and then about a week later on may 2nd the public sale will happen um where where we will sell the remaining keys um and 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 again those will have two profile mints each um so once you have this genesis key you'll continue through our page and and you'll be able to select whatever name you'd like and whatever type of of uh, nft.com profile you want um, and mint that, and that is yours to own. And over time, as, as we, we move forward, these gallery functions will will in, increase and develop. Um, and then and as we move towards, you know, a full launch where there's things like analytics in a marketplace, um, you know, we'll, we'll be listening to the community and adjusting course as such. Awesome. Okay, so it sounds like then the Genesis keys are this is the this is the first gate or phase gate for participation at this point is to get in on a Genesis key. That is like that's the main goal. I'm gonna say this to my audience. That's the main goal right now. That's the brass ring. You want to get that right now because yeah. otherwise it's gonna be very difficult to uh, to uh, leverage this platform maybe to its fullest for the way that you hope to. And then you're saying that with each Genesis key, that's two profiles, and that's what we're calling these URLs right now on mm-hmm. NFT.com or our profile or profile pages or just. Profiles. Yeah, they're they're profile NFTs. Okay, got it. Yeah. And then, as far as their the functionality of a profile NFT at this point, mm-hmm. um, to get maybe a tiny bit nerdy with my audience who, who might know the difference between the ER seven twenty one standard and the ER eleven fifty five standard, are we looking at something that's extremely complex that that has ownership rights, or is it uh, is it more publishing rights and then a tie in to a front end on on the site that that's maybe more a little more in line with like like ERC seven twenty one. Yeah, so so these are these are purely ERC seventy one uh, seven twenty one tokens. Um, these are these are, these are um, NFTs themselves, um, and uh, the Genesis key is as well as the profiles themselves. Um, the Genesis keys come with some amazing artwork and are very unique. They basically mark the the, the pioneers, the the founding community of NFT.com, dot um, and, uh, and and will be the first to really even get a chance to own one of these profiles. And we're we're taking a little bit of like kind of the original Gmail approach, where those people will then be able to possibly invite some people in and we'll slowly open those gates to the greater community. Um, There will only be 10,000 Genesis keys, but there will be uh, many more profiles in time. Got Hey, that makes sense. I mean, if it's a semantic structure on the website itself, then I mean, the, uh our imagination is a limit it seems um yeah. and then whatever's fit to publish i guess on on the site <laughs> yeah um i should i should i should go there because i mean people are going to go there um w- as it is right now it, are the restrictions on the type of content that's published or the types mm-hmm. of profiles that can be minted because there's got there's going to be that one person in my audience is like hey you know what i uh, you know i've got a connection to this industry or, or that industry or whatever it is maybe it's not vice or whatever but it's just something that that most people you know aren't thinking of right now are there restrictions right now on this in initial minting of the Genesis keys and profiles? Yeah, so it is a brilliant question. Um, so we aim to really be as hands off here as possible. Um, but but in the same way that that everyone is bound to copyright and in, infringement laws, um, at just as ENS is as well. Um, we basically say, you know, don't go out and get an infringe on other people's copyright. If if you're impersonating Nike and they come for you, they're going to come for you. And then we're going we're to have to take some actions. Ideally, um, as a community, we'll have to take an action. Um, but, uh, you know, when it, and, and the other thing that that we do kind of want to avoid really is is like hate speech speech um you know but if you want to go mint some crazy stuff like we're we're really trying to keep that that list of what you can what you can't mint very very low it's a it's an impossible problem to police it all at once and go here's just all of the bad words ever that you can't mint um but uh what i can say is that um yeah we 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 have that we have the controls in place to to take actions if needed we're aiming not to um we obviously can't uh you know like 
go in and just like take a profile away, but you know, from someone who's minted something, but at the same time, um, we, we can, you know, bar a certain profile from a platform if it infringes in a really negative way. But ultimately, you know, one of the things that we did at Hedera was we built kind of a governance structure to help determine what stays on the platform and what doesn't. And uh, we're, we're kind of looking to do a very similar thing here. Got it. Okay, so it sounds like a lot of the uh, a lot of the value added uh, tech that the team that that are all Hedera Hashgraph uh, alum uh, alumni worked mm -hmm. on has been ported over to NFT.com. Or NFT.com is a beneficiary of a lot of this this work that uh, fell into the open source, I guess. So, uh, I, how did that work out? Yeah, I mean, more. yeah, did, with, so, oh, with 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 Hedera. Yeah, but the, the with some of these control structures you're talking about, without it being oppressive, uh, but they're but they're you know but they're being moderation, which just makes sense in the modern world. Like you have to have it. Um, yeah. How did that? Yeah. How did that work? To ask a little bit of a nerdy question because my yeah. audience loves that stuff. No, it's all good. Um, you know, it, it was that was an interesting one, and I'm not saying that that we can do the exact same thing here because that they're very different projects, right? Um, yeah. With Hedera, we 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 ended up putting together, and I think they're still assembling the the 39 uh, members of the governing council, which are all in uh, they're geographically distributed as well as by industry and and competition um, to to uh, reduce the possibility of collusion of the governing structures, and then they have set terms. Um, for what we're doing, um, it needs to be a bit more, uh, you know, on the individual level um but at the by the but one of the things that we also talk about like with DAOs is that you can't just like open the floodgates and expect every single person of the DAO to just immediately take action participate flawlessly and work as a cohesive unit um you know we most countries in the world can still struggle with this so yeah. um it's a path to decentralization um it, it's a path to to decentralized governance um and and that's kind of uh what what we're aiming to do here um we're looking at a lot of um interesting kind of social mechanics too on social platforms of how they kind of self-moderate um and uh yeah that's about all i can kind of say at the moment but uh it's it's pretty exciting conversations we're having are really cool sure no that's great to hear also i mean because this is the i mean this is the ongoing struggle when it comes to publishing and balancing publishing with freedom of expression i don't want uh and you can't even you can't even say um can't, just I'll just call it freedom of expression because you even you yeah. saying that in the wrong way gets some people triggered. Um, but freedom mm -hmm. of expression, balancing that with content moderation and with communities, and then of course with publishing and all of the uh, all the legal responsibilities and accountability for whatever the publishing body is. So I can definitely understand that you guys are in a you're in a tricky position, but also <laughs> uh, but it sounds like you put incredible thought into how to make it a bit more fair and a, a bit more decentralized over time. I mean, uh, kudos for even for getting that far. I know a lot of a lot of competitors in this space, not going to name names, um, they're they're very much content to just say like, well, no, we own the top level domain. So obviously we own the band hammer and and without rhyme or reason, apparently, or notice in some cases, we just strike down anything we don't like. So yeah. uh, it sounds like you guys are really putting a lot of thought into this. Yeah, I um in in my e-commerce ventures, um, I I got to uh, experience a, a lot of trying to kind of fix a, a broken system, and uh, it it's been uh, I'm I'm really kind of excited for the for this challenge, right? Like, how do you how do you provide really good customer support, and how do you provide really good um, you know fair moderation um, in a Web three company especially with this much um you know user customization um so it's gonna be a challenge but we're here for it we enjoy this type of stuff awesome awesome so uh we've got a couple minutes left before uh before my audience starts to starts to fall asleep shame on you guys you should grow <laughs> grow an attention span read a book um okay. I, i'm kidding don't don't uh, no don't, don't navigate away watch us the interview um but is there's if there's any one final thing that people who right now are looking at nft.com and wondering hmm, should i get involved um let's speak to people who are maybe maybe they're proof of work enthusiasts maybe they're already into the ethereum ecosystem and they've been a little bit slow to adopt um, why why should these laggards who haven't really gotten involved in NFTs so far, why should they jump in right now with NFT.com? What do you think is the, the top reason for that that avatar right there that I outlined? Well, at, at, at the moment, right, if, if you're early to this, this is your opportunity to mint, um, you know, really iconic um, profiles on NFT.com. This is this is the, uh, you know, the the at Jack on Twitter kind of moment. Um, so if it, at a minimum, if you're even like specul speculatively hype on on the growth of the NFT ecosystem over the next few years, um, you know, g getting your hands on on one of these would, would be a pretty landmark and iconic, uh, you know, home, home base for you in Web3. And, and that's, that's kind of what I always um, equate this to really is is uh th this is 
this is your own personalized home here in for all of your digital goods. So come make a home here at nft.com. Um, you can go to nft.com right now and uh, sign up for the whitelist to get into the blind auction and then participate in the public sale too. Um, check out our Discord. We're uh, happy to have you that have, have you join us and we'd, we'd love to chat too. You know, the entire team loves to engage in conversation in there and uh, take feedback from the community. So give us your thoughts, give us your ideas. We're here to work. That's awesome, Alec. I appreciate your time. And based on the interview, the the the, the chat that we had before the camera started rolling, and during yeah. this time, um, I'm convinced that uh, that you're being genuine when you invite that community feedback. So, audience, please well, take them up you. on that. Thank you so much for your time. This has been great. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, 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 yeah